Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to do the unboxing and overview of the Yoda Phone 3. So a couple years back I did a unboxing of the Yoda Phone 2, which was a smartphone that was released by a Russian company, Yoda, and then they soon went out of business. But before they went out of business, they released the Yoda Phone 3 in select territories. I don't think it ever got released in the US, but um, it is available, or was available I should say. It was released back in 2017, whereas the Yoda Phone 2 was released in 2015, I believe. So, um, yeah, this is the last Yoda Phone. So, uh, let's do the unboxing of it. I know this is an old device, or a few years old device, but it is kind of unique because I do remember the original Yoda Phone uh, 2 was one of the more unique devices I've uh, ever unboxed because it has two displays, right? So, uh, interesting thing, this is in Chinese, so... I believe the Yoda Phone 3 was, uh, had a limited release in China. I don't know where other territories they released in, but um, apparently it was released in China, and uh, that's pretty much all I know. So this is in Chinese. And then um, it actually comes with a, a sort of booklet on the front here. So uh, you read about the stuff here, and you can see, ooh, paper book experience, healthy eye protection. Modes of content. Uh, I don't know what that is, but I assume it has something to do with knowledge because this is the word for knowledge. But uh, yes, and then, ooh, we get a nice white model here, of course, because white people are so popular in Asia. You got to use them for Chinese advertisement. All right, and it comes with a Chinese warranty and a Chinese quick start guide which I don't think Yoda actually released this device in any of the territories. It might be only China. Yeah. And then they went bankrupt last year, I believe, 2019. So that's unfortunate because, yeah, Yoda made some pretty interesting and unique devices, which I will show you later in this video. Exactly why this phone is so special. So, um, yeah, this is the Yoda Phone 3. And uh, just to give you a rundown of the specs, again, released 2017, so it has 2017 specs. Uh, runs Android 7.1, a Snapdragon 625 uh, with an Adreno 506 GPU, uh, 64 gigs of storage, 4 gigs of RAM. Um, does not have any kind of SIM card slot. Uh, has a 5.5 inch 1920 by 1080 display. Uh, so the interesting thing about the Yoda Phone 3, just like the Yoda Phone 2 before it, is that in addition to this front 5.5 inch display, there is a back display as well, which is a 5.2 inch e-ink display, which is 1280 by 720. And the purpose of the secondary e-ink display is basically saves battery life in case you want to, um, for example, read a book, right? If you want, if you use Kindles a lot and you read eBooks a lot, this might be useful. Or you just want to use um, some regular applications that don't require fast response time, then using the e-ink display might save you a lot of battery life. So uh, that's the interesting thing about the Yoda Phone is that it has two displays, and two displays not in the sense that it has, you know, it's not it's not like the ZTE Axon M or the um, LG G8 X where you have uh, dual displays, right? Or the even the Asus ROG Phone 2, right? Where you have the twin view dock or something like that. You have two different displays. Um, it's not like that. It, it has two different displays, but one's exactly on the back of the other. So it's not like a separate, um, it's not like a, a separate device that attaches to it. So that's what makes the second display interesting. It's, it doesn't use a color display, it uses an ink display as well. So it's really interesting, it's got a, Fingerprint sensor on the front, which is not a pressable home button, but uh, I think it might act as, act as one. And then there's a front-facing camera right here. Uh, you have the volume rockers on the side. This is probably the power button. And then uh, you have a USB-C charger, USB-C uh, port right here. No headphone jack, no micro SD card slot. So, yeah, but that's... You know, 2017 is when all that stuff started to go away. So I guess that's uh, when the writing was on the wall for that stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's take a, let's boot it up and take a look. All right, so this is the Yoda Phone 3. And uh, as you can see, the wallpaper, everything is in Chinese. 
as expected. And this is the interface, again, Android 7, which is an outdated version of Android, but again, this phone is from three years ago, so um, not too unexpected. Um, the camera, by the way, I don't think I mentioned the camera specs. It is a 13 megapixel camera on the back, f2.2. So nothing too special to write home about. Um, I guess it can take some okay pictures, but don't expect anything like a get like a Galaxy S8 or um, iPhone 7 from that time or Pixel 2 from that year. Those are probably much better camera phones from that time. Um, yeah, it's just an okay one. And this is a, there is some haptic feedback on this button. So while you can't really press it in, it's definitely a home button. And then you can see some capacitive uh, buttons right here that light up, which is the menu icon and the back button. That's just standard Android stuff, um, but in a different location than what I'm used to, I guess, because I've been using the Pixel for so long. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess it doesn't have access to the Google Play Store since this is a Chinese phone. Uh, Chinese usually don't have access to the Play Store since, you know, Google's banned in China. So um, they usually have to use this other app store here, which is a, a bootleg kind of discount Google Play Store. Uh, so yeah, you have to get your apps from here, the discount Google Play, or the Chinese Google App Store or whatever. That's kind of the downside of uh, using a phone that was made only for the Chinese market. <laughs> um, and then there's the e-ink display right here. So press the power button again, and we can unlock the e-ink display right here. And uh, we can do some reading right here and Yes, this is actually a display, and people who don't know e-ink, it's basically just like reading a paper document. Uh, like it's, it's like reading a newspaper. Um, the response times are really slow, but it does save a lot on the battery, and uh, I guess when you're reading books and articles and stuff, it feels more like reading a newspaper, so that's a good thing too, I guess. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't look like it's a screen, right? It looks like it's just like a, a newsprint, right? Which is kind of cool. So, but it is a screen. So there are some apps for it. Uh, man, my Chinese is not good. So I can't actually, I don't actually know what these are. Um, you can, oh, it comes with Suhu. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, these are all apps. Web browser. Yep, so you can basically do the same thing here. This has uh, the same apps that you would have on the main display right here except it's on the back e-ink display. Panels, we can set it up. As you can see, the response times are really bad on the screen, and you can definitely see a lot of ghosting because that's what e-ink displays are like. But again, it's kind of a unique thing, right? I would, I'm kind of surprised that Amazon did not go with an e-ink kind of display or some kind of th something like that for their Amazon Fire Phone. But, I'm, maybe it, they could have done it with Kindles on a Chinese app store, huh? Set home. Okay. So what's my home now? Is it Kindle? Nope. Let's set up the panels. I suppose if the Amazon Fire Phone succeeded and they made a successor, then they could have experimented around with adding an e-ink display because, you know, Amazon is most well-known for Obviously, they sell everything, but they started with books, and they're still really well known for books. So, all right. So, uh, what else do we have? We have the wallpaper here, which actually looks kind of cool on the back, and then we have WeChat, which every Chinese person uses. Uh, this is a music player. Then we got. Uh, I'm guessing this is the Chinese Kindle, MoBest. Let's see if we can read something from here. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. Nice, it's uh, 21 Laws of Leadership. Let's read this. Uh, contents. Yep, of course, it's going to be in Chinese, but at least you guys can see what reading an ebook on the back screen is like. So, yeah, I mean, it is just like reading newsprint. So, for reading documents and um, articles and ebooks, I think the this back display is quite good because one thing is it does it saves you battery life. You know, if you're reading a long book or something like that, 
um, or you do a lot of reading, then it could definitely save you a lot of battery life, and it just looks better. Like anyone who's used the Kindle Paperwhite stuff, uh, you know, like it definitely looks better than reading it on a Kindle Fire, right? It's because of the display technology is different, and it really does look like newsprint. So it is easier on the eyes. I know, like going between different pages is a little bit annoying because of the ghosting. But if you can get past that, um, the reading reading on the back display here on the e ink display is quite a pleasure. I think so. Anyways. That's uh, just the demonstration of the using the back panel here, uh, probably for something like reading books or articles is what I would use it for. You're definitely not going to play games on the back display. Like that would be crazy, right? Uh, this basically for, for stuff like this. And it, it is definitely, I think, superior to using a regular LCD or OLED display for reading books because it just feels natural, right? It, it's just like picking up a newspaper and the completely not glossy it's completely matte and everything no reflections uh, I just think it's more natural to read on this display um, yeah and then there's uh, Kindle as well uh, I was I didn't even know that Chinese uh, that China had Kindle but they do so you can download your Kindle books there and you can download more apps here anything you can download from the Chinese app store you can also put on the back screen and then in addition, you have the regular front screen for when you want to do regular stuff, right? You want to watch videos or you want to play games, then you have the, the regular front screen, which is an AMOLED panel. So this is an OLED display. When you need the OLED display, you want to watch media, play games, you have the beautiful OLED display here. But if you want to read some books, then bam, the back screen is available to you. Mobest or Kindle. Um, you can even play music from here if you want, uh, or you use WeChat. Although I don't know why you would ever use WeChat on an e-ink display, but it's there. Um, so yeah, you have the two displays available to you. That's what kind of makes the Yoda Phone unique. Uh, I mentioned this about the Yoda Phone Two and the Yoda Phone Three is basically just an updated version of the Yoda Phone Two. Uh, it's not too different from the Yoda Phone Two, other than the specs and the display. Obviously, the regular upgrades. Um, but it's not drastically different. It's the same concept. You have the regular phone. It's just if you read a lot, like if you're a really you're a, you're a bookworm and you like to read, then I would say this phone is is pretty good for you, right? But it's kind of a shame that Yoda's not in business anymore. They went bankrupt last year, uh, so you're definitely not going to see any more of these devices. This is probably the last one, and I'm a little bit disappointed that other companies haven't made such a concept yet. Because um, this seems like a unique concept that other companies should probably pick up. Uh, but other companies have been focusing on the dual displays, the folding displays. They haven't really focused on, you know, I guess this is really niche, but still, I guess, uh, if you're the type of person to bring around a, a, a smartphone and a Kindle, then this phone is probably for you, right? The Yoda Phone 3. And being that it's from 2017, it's still usable today, very usable. I still use 2017 phones today. My Xperia XE1, my Google Pixel 2, the Essential phone, like those still work pretty well today, even though it's, it's old. But this device, I would say it's still usable today, even as just a regular phone. So that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching the Yoda Phone 3, which is a kind of limited phone first of all it was only available in china and second of all the company's no longer in business so it's a it's a nice little look at a, i would think is this a rare device so thanks for watching and uh let me know any feedback in the comments